Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Portal. This game is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. And it's a game I've let's played before, but I thought I'd go ahead and replay it since the RTX version is coming out pretty soon. Hello and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur. For your own safety and the safety of others, please refrain from the The portal will open in three, two, one. Okay, so we get right into the game, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows how a portal works. Um, this sounds really condescending, I promise I'm not trying to be. But the way that a portal works is there's one portal here, and there's one portal over there. And it basically bends space so that when you go into one portal, you exit out of the other. And you can see your player character, her name is Chell, and when you walk through one portal, you exit out of this one. So we were in here and we walk through there, we're out here. I'm pretty sure this is basic concept for some, but for some who um, aren't really into sci-fi sort of stuff and haven't really played like a lot of games in the last year, in the last uh, few decades, this is a pretty mind-bending weird thing. So basically this entire game is just you going around from one test to the other to just try to solve everything. This is a very basic one. You see over in the on the right of the screen, it says E to pick up an object. Press E, you pick up the object, and you want to place it down on the button. Excellent. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material emancipation grill will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the Aperture Science Weighted Storage Cube. Please place the Weighted Storage Cube on the 1500 MW Aperture Science Heavy Duty Super Colliding Super Button. So we just want to step into the portal, grab the cube, and walk out and wait for the button to appear. Perfect. Please move quickly to the chamber lock as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. So that voice you're hearing is GLaDOS, a an artificial intelligence who basically oversees all of the testing that we're doing. It feels so awesome to be playing this game again just because I love this game a lot. You're doing very well. Please be advised that a noticeable taste of blood is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. So one thing that you'll notice as we get into the Portal games is that they have a great sense of humor, and we'll get to see that a little bit later. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science Handheld Portal Device. With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you. Please proceed to the chamber lock. Mind the gap. Well done. Remember, the aperture science bring your daughter to work day is the perfect time to have her tested. I'm not going to get to talk in a lot of these earlier sections because GLaDOS does a lot of the talking for you. Or for me. You're, you guys aren't the one that's talking. Welcome to test chamber four. You're doing quite well. So this one's a classic one. Just open up the portal, grab the cube, walk inside. Once again, excellent work. As part of our required test protocol, 
We will not monitor the next test chamber. You will be entirely on your own. Good luck. So yeah, now that she's not monitoring us, I can go ahead and talk a bit more. Uh, if you enjoy trivia as much as I do, I'd suggest playing through this game with the uh, director commentary on it because they share a lot of insight on basically, you know, how to show something to your player without, you know, giving too much away. Anyways, one of my favorite things to do is to just find faster ways to go about stuff. Like right now, I'm currently not doing the best, but. As part of a required test protocol, our previous statement suggesting that we would not monitor this chamber was an outright fabrication. Good job. As part of a required test protocol, we will stop enhancing the truth in three, two, one. More of that sense of humor I was talking about. But yeah, I'm not doing the best here because I feel like every single time I let's play a game, it sounds like I'm blaming something else for how bad I'm being at the game. But the thing is, I think there's some... Yeah. So as I was saying, I feel like I blame like a lot of stuff for how bad I'm sucking at the game, but I'm kind of getting used to how I'm set up here because I have to play in a sort of awkward position because, you know, I'm recording this and I'm trying to keep the mouth, my mouse away from my microphone as much as possible because my mouse is a bit loud. Anyways, enough of me rambling on. This is a classic portal puzzle type. There's an energy ball, and you have to redirect it over into this receiver right here. And so, if you place a portal there, the ball will go right through there and hit that. So, when it comes to this game, there are a lot of ways to skip different stuff. And there's one especially coming up pretty soon that uh, is like you can do super fast. Um... I love watching speedruns of this game because it's it's just absolutely crazy what they can pull off. So once you start playing through the game more and more, you'll start to be able to, once you get used to the controls, you can start skipping around and doing a bunch of stuff a bit early. There are just tons of skips that I that I love to do when replaying through these games. I'll try to play through this game semi-normally, but I'll mention Please cool skips. But yeah, in this room, there's especially a really cool skip where if, like, you get a good bit of momentum and shoot a portal up there, you can, like, jump through that portal and just zoom over to that side. It's really cool and it's hard, but it's also hard to explain, so I'd really suggest watching some speedruns of this game. Very impressive. Please note that any appearance of danger is merely a device to enhance your testing experience. So, this game is incredibly short. Um, oh. The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. Fantastic. You remain resolute and resourceful in an atmosphere of extreme pessimism. I really like that puzzle a lot because when you play through the game again, you can just be, it's just like, there is no way to solve this puzzle. And then you solve it like one second later and she's just like, fantastic. Hello again. 
So this test chamber is all about momentum. So basically, one way to propel yourself forward is to place a portal on the ground and a portal high up on the wall, jump from a good distance so that you land in the portal with a lot of momentum going down, and that'll transfer the momentum from here over there, so instead you're getting flung over there. It's a bit hard to explain, and the game explains it in a much funnier way later, so let me just go ahead and show you. Like that. of mass and velocity is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. There's that funny explanation I was talking about earlier. A good way, a good trick or tip, I guess, for doing those flings is that if you're falling towards a portal and you're not sure you're going to land in it, try looking directly into the portal. Like, looking directly at it, because your character model then... Uh, starts to go directly towards it. Okay, I feel like this entire Let's Play will just be me pointing out jokes that I love, so... There's one of them. So you just want to shoot that energy ball over there. And now we have to wait for that portal to go around. Once it shoots over there, you want to walk through there, shoot a blue portal right over on the little platform thingy. Then you've got that. It doesn't... I don't know why I always try to dodge that. It doesn't matter if you get hit by a portal thing. So this thing is pretty expensive, so gotta treat it with care. This room has a pretty cool thing that you can do where once you get the portal gun, you can shoot a portal up there, a portal over there, jump into that portal, and immediately get over there. Now, now that I have two portals, I'm gonna do it the thing that everyone does whenever they play portal. I shoot a portal directly up, portal directly down. Pretty trippy, right? So now we just want to head over to the elevator thing, the chamber lock. A lot of these things have proper names. That, that's how I deal with... That's what I do with a lot of games, is that they have, like, a proper term. Things in the game have a proper term. However, I just like to give them my own fun name or just name something after something in real life. Now you just want to keep using the same portal to fling yourself higher and higher. Once you get up there, this little thing will go ahead and angle itself up so that when you jump into that orange portal again, you'll get flung right over to the other side. You just want to grab this cube, put it on the button, then jump back into the portal. But yeah, this is how it'll just be kind of going. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but just so that it, this isn't too tedious and I'm explaining everything, once I walk into a chest, test chamber, I'll just let GLaDOS explain everything first. Now that you are in control of both portals, this next test could take a very, very long time. If you become lightheaded from thirst, feel free to pass out. An incubation associate will be dispatched to revive you with peptic cells and adrenaline. And then once she's done talking, I'll get back to whatever I want to talk about. Or if I have some notes about the test chamber, 
then I'll go ahead and mention that as well. So while I'm going through this, I don't know if anyone else experiences this. Um, it's probably just a me thing, but for some reason, whenever I watch a YouTuber that's in like their early 30s, I always think they're in their early 20s instead. Like, I don't know why, but so something about the YouTubers that I watch that are in their 30s sound m much, much younger than they actually are. As part of a previously mentioned required test protocol, we can no longer lie to you. When the testing is over, you will be missed. This chamber. All subjects intending to handle high energy gamma leaking portal technology must be informed that they may be informed of applicable regulatory compliance issues. No further compliance information is required or will be provided, and you are an excellent test subject. So one dream that I always remember having is that um, there's this one dream. It was probably the first dream that I ever remember having is I was in k kindergarten, right? And you know how sometimes in cartoons and like TV shows and just fiction in general, how like uh, someone will be having a dream and then something will happen in real life that causes that person to like that causes something to happen in that person's dream i don't know if i'm explaining it well basically what happened to me was that i remember um i just completely missed that jump that's not even supposed to be hard i just suck uh i remember that uh i had a dream where i was in kindergarten eating lunch and all of a sudden just for some reason in my pocket I had my alarm clock because my parents had given me an alarm clock at the time just to help me wake up and stuff and so I remember that in my dream By the way, this is a test chamber that can be sped run to the point where it only takes like 10 seconds to beat. But I remember in the dream, for some reason my alarm clock was in my pocket and I just pull it out and it starts beeping. And I guess in my dream someone had played like a prank on me and made it so that I couldn't turn my alarm clock off and everyone in the cafeteria started laughing at me for some reason. I don't know, dreams are always so weird, especially when you're a young child. So yeah, that's our main goal here, or our main motivation for helping out with these tests is that we get some cake at the end. I'm always down for some cake. Oh. So I remember... One of the first Christmases that I remember, we're just going back to all of my early memories today, is that one Christmas, it was a really special Christmas where pretty much I was over at my house, and I don't know why I'm saying over at my house, because, you know, I already live in my house, but it was a Christmas held at my house, and basically all of my cousins were there right because you know typically during holidays like some of the family shows up but some of the family has to stay home for one reason or another but pretty much all of my cousins showed up and i remember just having a blast just having a ton of fun like with a bunch of toys and stuff that we had i was really young like 
four, I want to say. Four or five-ish. Um, but I remember just having so much fun that Christmas because we played a bunch of games. We, it, it was just great. I think that was the first time that... Uh, I remember, I think one of my cousins bought Minecraft for me, and I remember really enjoying that game. I haven't played it in a while. Well, actually, wait, never mind. Never mind, I was just, like, I played a bit of it when I was making some vids for my videos for my second channel. Which you should, could, should totally go check out, by the way. But I remember that, uh, that Christmas was just so fun, but, oh. Due to mandatory scheduled maintenance, the appropriate chamber for this testing sequence is currently unavailable. It has been replaced with a live fire course designed for military androids. The Enrichment Center apologizes for the inconvenience and wishes you the best of luck. So this is where we get to some fun. These are our first enemies. These are turrets. I'm pretty sure there are there are only enemies, except for the uh, final boss. But I'm getting ahead of myself. But yeah, as you can see over here, once a turret sees you, they start shooting a bunch of bullets at you. So how do you take them out? You just knock them over. But be careful, though, because they can still shoot bullets after they get knocked down. So for this one, you want to peek out from the corner, shoot a portal, and shoot a portal here. Just... Whoops. Sometimes when you throw the turrets, they land up against the wall or something like that, or they land on their feet and they just don't go down. One portal there, one portal here. Chuck that turret down the stairs. And here is our first, like bit of plot to this game. We see some red text saying help and a handprint. If we move these boxes out of the way, another help. Someone's been living in here for a long, long time. And we get this message that says the cake is a lie. A line that's become pretty iconic over the internet, but is a pretty creepy message when you see it at first. Okay. Got this turret right here. The way that you want to beat these guys is you want to... Oh, ow. Okay. You want to shoot a portal up there, shoot a portal over here. Then you want to drop a box. I really like the music in this part. I, I don't know if it kicks in when you find the secret or only if, or it just kicks in over time. But I really like it. The music in this game is so good because it gives a really creepy atmosphere. Another interesting fact about this game is that um, for you first person shooter fans, is it a first-person shooter? I guess it sort of is. I'll put up on screen if it's technically classified as a first-person shooter. But, um... This game is made by... Or, it was published by Valve, who are the same company who published uh, Half-Life. I've never played those games personally, but, um... If this game looks sort of similar to any other games that you might have played, this is why. So to get rid of these turrets, you want to go ahead and... Let me try... I'm going to try to take a box here so that I can hide myself from the turret and see if that works. Never mind. But you know what? I'm going to use that to... I'm going to put it in front of myself so I can 
Shield myself from bullets. Shoot a portal over here. Shoot a portal, portal right there. And take out these two turrets at the same time. Next we have this radio playing so the same music we heard at the beginning. And something that I didn't mention is that if you drop this mug, it actually shatters. So you can pick up the different pieces and chuck them everywhere. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and... I know I'm just explaining the puzzles again, but... You know, I've kind of run out of things to talk about. So, you want to shoot a portal up there. You want to shoot a portal underneath the cube over there. Shoot a portal under that guy. You know what? What I should have done is I should have put a portal up there and then and then a portal under that turret so they fell on top of each other. You know what? I wonder if I can still do something like that. Ah, no, I was so close. Okay, now I'm going to shoot a portal right there. And a way, if you want to drop something on enemies, to be more precise about it, I'd say shoot a portal above the enemy and then shoot a portal, the other portal on the wall so that you can have more precision when dropping the object. These turrets are really adorable because they have voices and you kind of feel bad for knocking them over. One portal over there, one portal over here, and you could honestly, if you wanted to, you don't even have to fight these last two turrets, you can just do that. Well done, Android. The Enrichment Center once again reminds you that Android Hell is a real place where you will be sent at the first sign of defiance. And that, if I believe what the next thing is, is, yep, that is where we're going to leave off the first episode of Portal. This will probably be a really short series, because this first episode is like half an hour and we're almost done with the game. Uh, but this was just supposed to be a fun little game that I wanted to play between Luigi's Mansion and the next Let's Play, because there's a reason that I'm playing that next game when I'm playing it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and continue on and maybe even beat the game. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.